Electrophoresis with DNA. You must wear safety goggles and gloves during this exercise. Here's the gel that we'll use to run DNA. The DNA is dyed blue so that we can see it in the gel. Both the buffer and the gel are colored with the same dye. This prevents the dye on the DNA from diffusing. Support the gel with your whole hand as you pull it from the bag. The wells in this gel are at one end and not down the middle, because DNA will all have a negative charge and will run in the same direction. Since opposite charges attract, it'll move toward the positive pole. Oops. Since DNA will run from negative to positive, always put the row of wells on the negative end of the chamber. We'll add TBE buffer to the chamber that's been dyed just like the gel and the buffer that it was stored in. Keep pouring until the buffer is a couple millimeters deeper than the surface of the gel. We're working with tiny amounts of DNA. Sometimes the drop will be splattered around the inside of the tube, making it impossible to measure accurately with the micropipette. We use the microcentrifuge to bring the droplets together. It's important to balance the tubes in the microcentrifuge. Three tubes evenly spaced is balanced. The switch is on the right side here. Turn it on for several seconds. When you turn it off, leave the lid closed until the rotor stops. You'll see all of the liquid is in the bottom of the tube. If you ever need to spin a single tube, maybe one fell on the floor, don't run it by itself. This bag has a couple of balance tubes. Take one out and place it opposite your DNA tube. This prevents damage to the microcentrifuge. Wait until it stops to open it. Put the balance tube back into the bag right away. We'll put the DNA tubes on a paper towel like we did with the dyes. The DNA in the blue capped tube is blue, but so is the DNA in the yellow tube. All of the DNA is the exact same color. The only way to tell them apart is to note what order they're going into the wells. I'll load them in from left to right. the DNA, we'll set the micropipette to 10 microliters. Remember, the red digit is the tenths place. Put a yellow tip on the micropipette. Open the first tube. Press the plunger down a few times to feel where the first stop is. Press down to the first stop and hold. Place the tip into the DNA. Slowly release the plunger. Put the tube into the foam rack. Rest your elbow on the table if you can. Lower the tip into the well, squeeze the plunger just down to the first stop, remove the tip from the buffer, and then release the plunger. Eject the tip into the beaker and get a fresh one. Make sure that you stick to the order that you've planned and pick up the next tube. Press to the first stop and hold, tip into the DNA and release. Put the tip into the well, Squeeze to the first stop, remove the tip from the buffer, and release. Eject the tip and continue. Here's a close-up view so that you can see how tiny 10 microliters looks in the yellow tip. There, that's all it is. Now we'll put it into the well. Press to the first stop, remove, and release. Be sure to keep the labeled paper towel together with the foam rack. Get the lid to the chamber. Check that the lid is in the right direction. 
always match red to red and black to black. Wiggle it down onto the posts. Squeeze each side. The two leads have plastic jackets that cover the posts. They slide back automatically as you plug them in. Plug the leads from one chamber into the holes in the same horizontal row. Our power packs have a couple of settings, 75 and 150. We're going to push the rocker switch toward the 75. The light coming on confirms that it's got power. After a few minutes, look at the wires from the end of the chamber. You should be able to see tiny bubbles streaming up from the wire. As long as at least one of the wire has tiny bubbles, you can be sure that the chamber is working correctly. When the time is finished, turn the power off first, unplug the leads, and remove the lid. Hold the chamber in one hand and wiggle the lid free with the other. Since everything in the chamber is blue, you may not be able to see the bands of DNA yet. We'll use a light box to get a better look. We cover the boxes in plastic to keep the liquid buffer off of them. Don't take the plastic off. There's a label that points to the switch on the side. Turn the light on and lay it flat on the table. I like to smooth the plastic to avoid lines behind the gel. Lift the tray, draining away as much buffer as possible. Place the gel on the light box. Use a ruler to measure how far each thin band of DNA is from the nearest edge of the well.